Does everyone need customer support today? We've got you. Intercom has the tools to manage support at any scale, like integrations, bots, and more. All in one powerful platform. We'll even automatically resolve 33% of your support volume, so you have more time for customers who need you most. Oh, that's better. Supercharge your team's productivity and make your customers super happy with Intercom. Learn more at intercom.com slash support. At Capella University, you're in control of your education. With the game-changing FlexPath format, you can set your own deadlines and move at your own pace. The faster you move, the more you save. Visit capella.edu to learn more. Hello, ladies and gentlemen, and welcome to another episode of the Secret to Success podcast. Today, I have an amazing guest joining us today. I have Mr. Chris Porteous. How are you doing today, Mr. Chris? I'm doing great. Thank you so much for having me today. That is awesome. We are excited to have you here because you have some amazing information to give our guests. So before we get started, can you please let our audience know who you are and exactly what is it that you do? Yeah, absolutely. Um, to be honest, I'm pretty sure my parents or family still don't know what I do, but to go into a bit of detail, <laughs> I'm the I'm the founder of SearchEye and My SEO Sucks, which is basically an SEO agency that's focused on, you know, automating processes and helping businesses around the world um, rank and be found in search. Awesome. So that leads me to my first question, Mr. Chris. Exactly what is SEO? Absolutely. And I get this question all the time. And even myself, I'm finding that the definition is changing. Um, mm. In short, it's basically optimizing your website and being able to be found in search. So any type of company can use this type of service or can kind of implement SEO on their website or for their business. Um, you know, for example, for us, we have clients in most major industries, including e-commerce, insurance, legal. Um, we do a lot of, you know, content-based marketing. But in short, it's just being found in, in search. Okay. And what I and in reading how you got into going into SEO, what was the one thing that you noticed the most that businesses were lacking or missing that that gave you the inspiration to start my SEO sucks? <laughs> or yeah, break um, media? so so for for me, I'm actually my background is in finance. So you know, coming out of university. I didn't know what SEO was. I would have never expected it to be where I am today. Um, but as you kind of just alluded to there, a lot of it came to finding shortcomings in what current marketing companies or current SEO companies do for their clients. Um, when I was working, you know, I had some experience uh, working at a hedge fund after university. I worked at a, you know, a bond rating agency. And I had experience at multiple different finance companies, even in co-ops. And when I'm kind of meeting up with companies we're analyzing, doing due diligence on, um, the one kind of common factor I noticed was their operations and their marketing in general, marketing specifically, didn't have, they didn't maybe have the right operations place. They didn't have the right kind of processes. A lot of these companies would hire, you know, large kind of global marketing firms that maybe weren't looking out for the best interest of the client and they were looking out, you know, for the best interest of the agency. There just wasn't a lot of transparency. There wasn't a lot of information. There wasn't that educational process for each, um, you know, each client that these agencies had. And I really saw an opportunity here to kind of pivot and work with, you know, these clients on the marketing side and figure out how can we bring more transparency to the process, how can we build automated, scalable systems? So not only are we able to 
really expand um, search results for our clients, but doing it in a repeatable, sustainable way. Um, so that's kind of how I got here. So a little bit of a roundabout um, way to get into the SEO space or marketing space in general. But um, as you talk to people who are in this space, most of them come from all different types of backgrounds and all kind of ended up here for different different reasons. Okay. So with that mean that can you explain to our audience the importance of SEO? Because as entrepreneurs, we hear about um, SEO, search engine optimization, but we don't, some don't actually know the importance of it when it comes to building your business, um, increasing your income, building your following. So can you break down to our audience the importance of SEO when it comes to their businesses? Yeah, absolutely. Uh, we, after university, my my friend and I on the side, we started a, and this might sound a little strange, but we started a cardboard furniture company. Um, going into this, we didn't have a lot of knowledge of marketing in general. We just knew that if we built desks and shelves, we could ultimately, you know, scale that business. Um, and if we're building these desks and shelves, selling them for twenty dollars, we thought this is a no-brainer. Um, who wouldn't want this? You can assemble this desk in you know, five or ten minutes. It ships flat packed. It's environmentally friendly. Um, for us, we're like, this is going to change everything. Like for students, potentially for disaster relief organizations, for governments. Uh, the problem was we created this great product. Uh, we had a you know, really nice website. We put a lot of energy into that. Um, we built you know, everything went to the fulfillment center. We had the operations down pat. The problem was we didn't have any clients. So it was really disheartening, uh, especially for a first order. You know, we we designed the products. We got thousands of units shipped to our fulfillment center, and we had no customers. So we, we tried a bunch of different things. Um, the obvious solutions for us, before even I knew much about SEO and, and the process there, we were running Facebook ads. Uh, we were running Google AdWords pay-per-click, and we were seeing some sales come in, but ultimately, if we ever were to stop those, our sales would go back to zero. We didn't have really good funnels in place to capture organic growth to the business, which would ultimately build kind of long-term sustainability. So what we ended up doing was really focusing on our content marketing, so building you know, dozens, hundreds of articles built around, you know, student furniture, um, you know, low-cost furniture, you know, best cardboard desks or best desks on the market, you know, top 10 listicles for a website. And from there, we started seeing more traffic come to the site organically, and we saw our sales pick up. Um, the next step was then to reach out to journalists. Um, so we got mentioned in... I think Green Entrepreneur, Apartment Therapy, um, there was Engadget, Forbes, you know, and a bunch of different websites. We started getting kind of features in, mentions in, and we naturally saw our content ranking higher and higher. Um, and at this point, you know, we were you know, top one or two for, you know, cardboard desks, cardboard furniture, and kind of anything related around cardboard. And at this point, we really saw the business scale. So even at the time, we didn't necessarily know the value of SEO or the benefits of SEO, but through building content and building links to our site and high-quality you know, PR-type mentions to our site, we naturally started ranking really well for some big keywords in the space, and we had a lot of success. So just to kind of get back to your point, us as business owners, we didn't know SEO existed. We knew of it, we've heard of it, but we didn't know kind of how to get there. And by doing these, what we consider kind of natural evolutions of a marketing strategy, building more content, building more links, um, we really had success. So what our agency does is we built a model to scale that method, which is your content marketing strategy, your link building strategy, as well as your on-site technical SEO, including you know, optimizing certain pages for different keywords uh, and making 
you know, internal link and other types of improvements there. Uh, we've been able to help our clients really build up their customer base and really build up their businesses through this method. Okay, so there are a few things. Thank you so much for, for breaking that down to our audience, and there are a couple of things in there that you mentioned that I would like to um, really point out to our audience. So the first thing you said was your content. And the second thing you said were links or reputable um, reputable mentions online. So you mean to tell me, Mr. Chris, that if I build my content even more, if I, if I write blogs, if I do a YouTube video on something that would help me build up my SEO? Yeah, ab- absolutely. So what I love about content marketing and SEO in general, the goal of it is to expand your footprint as much as possible, whether that's, like you mentioned, creating videos, YouTube videos especially rank really high in search, um, creating content. But again, it's not about creating content for the sake of creating content. There needs to be a purpose behind each piece of content you're creating. Um, For us at our agency, for example, and what we do for our clients is we always start with keyword research. again, depending on the process, but A, we find keywords or topics that are generating a lot of traffic. And from there, we're building kind of content clusters or building, you know, content recommendations to write content for. So, um, you know, we have one of our clients, it's uh, a pest control site, and we just wrote an article about best mosquito repellent. So how we kind of start there is we came up with a topic based on keyword volume as well as um, how topical it is, how popular that term or that kind of content cluster is. And from there, we put together a guide outline. So we'd look at different mosquito, like first of all, buyer's guide, what to look for when you're uh, buying mosquito repellent, um, what are different types of mosquito um, repellent, not in terms of products, but the different um, chemicals in each, and then looking at the top 10, you know, mosquito repellents. So from there, we create this guide that focuses on different content clusters or different keywords. So in that one, you have, you know, best mosquito repellents, um, mosquito chemicals, what are the best types of mosquito repellents, et cetera, et cetera. And we're building content that now is it's designed to rank and search. And that ultimately is going to boost the amount of visitors that are coming to your website, as well as if you're hitting certain topics and clusters, you're also going to see a much higher conversion rate amongst that content. So a lot of people, they'll create blogs or posts, and they're like, yeah, I'm creating five posts a week or you know, 10 posts a month, and I'm just not seeing any traffic come from it. Um, ultimately, you might be writing about stuff that people aren't typically searching for in Google or other search engines. So getting back to your question, it's great to blog regularly. It's great to create YouTube videos, but one part of the process is creating the content. The first part of that process needs to be about researching and finding what people are looking for and then building content around that. Have you ever wondered about what happened before an innovator or entrepreneur had their I got it moment? Well, I certainly have. Well, that's why I really enjoy Before It Happened, hosted by Donna Lawlin, former journalist and storyteller with a captivating way to abstract the behind the scenes story. And now she's sharing those stories with us. Before any world changing innovation, there was a moment, an event, a realization that sparked the idea. Before It Happened is a show about that idea. Donna lets us listen in as she speaks to visionaries, innovators, thought leaders, and more each Thursday. Listen and subscribe to Before It Happened wherever you get your podcast. Okay, thank you. Thank you very much. So I can't just 
write an article. I do need to do my research. I do need to see what keywords people are searching for. So that way when I do write my article, I include those keywords. So when my article is posted and people are researching these types of things, my article comes up. Exactly. Um, okay. And we've seen that as a, an, an interesting point with that. And we've seen that not just with our clients, but we get a lot of requests from companies all around, all around the world asking us questions like, we don't want necessarily to have a full SEO campaign, but can you guys do some keyword research for us? Or, hey, we want to rank for these. Can you put together some content recommendations? And with the new platform we're building, which should be live in the next two to three months, we're basically creating the ability for any company, any type of business to buy one-off you know, keyword research products or content strategy products. So a lot of people, you know, SEO is very expensive. If you want to hire a campaign, you could spend anywhere from, you know, 1000 a month up to 10, 20, 30,000, depending on how big um, and how competitive the space is. And that's just not feasible for a lot of um, small businesses. And so we're trying to change that model and give everyone the ability to kind of build their own strategy and use us for certain parts of the SEO process. That's actually pretty awesome. Oh, thank you. So that's a, yep. So this leads me to another question. (laughs) No, 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 no worries at all. This leads me to the next question. So when it comes to, so when you have, let's say they're, like you were saying, you guys are building a different system. So should someone go to an agency or should someone come to someone like you who are like, well, we can help you with these different parts instead of, you know, doing the whole thing for you? Because let's say I'm I'm a business owner. I need to focus on the product development. I don't have time for this whole SEO marketing content, you know, this part of it. Who should I go to to help me with this? Yeah, absolutely. And that's a question that we ask ourselves all the time. When we're looking at, we've done our research, we've looked at hundreds of SEO companies, we've looked at pricing, and we wanted to understand the model as well as possible and what's included in every different price point. And for us, we found that, and even with our own agency, the biggest cost is on the account management side. So having, you know, whether it's reporting not too much, you can automate a lot of that, but having someone who's looking at your campaign, who's passing things out, who's having you're having phone calls with, who's sending you emails, communication back and forth. Um, we found that just to be prohibitively expensive when we're breaking down the price of a campaign. And we've been very focused on how can we, A, scale our own agency, and how can we keep costs as low as possible for businesses. And so for us, like, yeah, we developed, you know, a a few things, a few different products. So one is those one-off deals. Hey, everyone, I would love for you to go listen to My First Million. My First Million is a top 25 business podcast on Apple Podcast. Every week, Sam Parr and Sean Purry brainstorm business ideas you can start tomorrow. These can be little side hustles that you make 10 grand a month on or big billion dollar ideas. And sometimes they bring on famous guests to brainstorm ideas with them. Not only that, they have an episode called How to Create Five uh, Five Plus Figure Events. And they also have one called Hiring Exercises. I, me personally, I enjoy listening to both of those. They ha- shed a lot of information that I'm looking forward to applying. And in the Hiring Exercise, just go check them out. Go check them out for yourself. Again, that's my first million. And it's available wherever you listen to podcasts. So go check out my first million. At Capella University, you're in control of your education. With the game-changing FlexPath format, you can set your own deadlines and move at your own pace. The faster you move, the more you save. Visit capella.edu to learn more. Other bowls, which that could be even for an enterprise company or an agency who's looking just to outsource specific parts of the SEO process. Um, but then we also have 
SEO campaigns where you come on, you can onboard yourself, and then our technology will automatically build your strategy each month from you know FAQs on the site, uh, meta tags, content strategy, keyword research, link building, um, content guide outlines. We'll handle you know ninety percent of the entire SEO process, requiring just a little bit of input from you. But we've cut out the account manager. That you know, that person who's going to hold your hand every step of the way, and as a result, we're able to you know lower costs from anywhere by fifty percent to seventy five percent of a traditional campaign. Um, that said, we recognize that doesn't work for everybody. Um, for us, that's our bread and butter, but there are different agencies depending on what you're looking for who are a full service solution, who you send it to them. You never have to get involved in the process. They handle all execution. But those types of campaigns typically are going to be much more expensive. So it really comes down to, as a business owner, do you want to, A, do it yourself, and then potentially outsource parts of it? Or do you want someone who's going to be there for you, handle all the execution, but there's still some strategy, some input required by the business owner to make sure the campaign's successful? Or lastly, do you want kind of a full-service solution, which, as you guessed, kind of, you know, that pricing model scales quite quickly? So it really depends on, on the business. There is no right or wrong answer. But again, it's you know, what resources do you have? What is your budget? Um, what is the potential ROI in that space? Um, for example, if you're a you know a family lawyer, which is one of the kind of highest value businesses in terms of leads coming in, um, where one lead you could pay back your you know one new client a month pays back your SEO investment you know ten fifteen x each month, then you might want a full service company to kind of help you out. But then you have maybe your local restaurant or you have like a local retail shop. That full service model might be prohibitively expensive and you're not going to see a positive ROI on that. And you might look to kind of having that hybrid between a, a DIY and the full service agency. So it really depends on the business. It really depends on yeah, what niche you're in, how competitive is it, what is your kind of knowledge level or educational level in digital marketing and SEO. So there's not one, you know, one size fits all solution there. You got it. Thank you very much for breaking that down for us. And so now Chris, I have another question. What what is the big secret to winning when it comes to SEO and Google search? Yeah, and that's a, that's a loaded question. Um, there really is, I don't want to say any specific secret. For us, it's really being very oper- operationally focused, hyper-efficient, um, so we can invest all of our resources directly into deliverables that are going to move the needle in terms of SEO. So... The biggest thing, the the two biggest things you can do, one, as you imagine, and it still has the largest impact on your overall rankings and getting found in search, is link building. And that is getting, you know, I call it, or I kind of compare it to digital PR, which is getting mentions on high quality websites. So, you know, I use it, you're a furniture company, you know, like when we had our cardboard furniture business, and we were getting mentions on apartment therapy which is a very well-known, reputable um, website in that space. And something like that, Google sees you now as an authority because you're getting mentioned on these really big sites. They're very valuable. Um, that is kind of the most important thing. Um, at least in my mind, is still what we're seeing based on the data we're collecting. Um, that said, it can be very resource-intensive. It can be very um, expensive, depending if, you might want to hire a company that specializes in getting you mentions, getting you digital PR, link building agencies. But it still works really well. And I can't imagine that 
you know, Google is getting smarter, search engines are getting smarter, but that's still not going away. Um, the second piece to that is the content side. So links are great. You're getting mentions on these really high quality websites, but where are they linking to? Are you getting mentions that just go back to your homepage? Are you getting mentions that maybe go to a cardboard furniture service page that you built? Um, so building out that content on your site. So not only do you have authority through these links, but you have such a wide range of depth and breadth of content. Um, Google's getting much smarter at recognizing this. For example, if you had a cardboard furniture site and you wrote about you know, desks, cardboard desks, cardboard shelves, um, environmentally friendly products for furniture, and kind of went really deep into anything cardboard furniture related, Google's going to naturally see you as an expert because you have all that content on your site. It's linking to each other. You have a proper hub and spoke model where you have these really big hub pages, for example, let's say cardboard furniture, and then you have spoke pages, which are which break down cardboard furniture, you know, cardboard shelves, cardboard desks, et cetera, and you have guides and everything else, um, you're going to be seen as an authority in the space. So it's not easy. There's not like any quick wins here, but it's really developing high quality content that's really targeted to your focus area and then okay. working with websites in your space and getting mentions on those. Okay, and then you mentioned something about something about being an expert in your space. How important is that when it comes to your SEO, your links, your your content development? How important is is that when it comes to when someone goes into Google and they search your name? Yeah, I I don't mean so much you as an expert, but your website being kind of an expert resource for anything related to your core focus or your core topic. So if you had a furniture website, the more articles you have around furniture, or you can get even more niche. As I mentioned, you can have a cardboard furniture website. You can have a website just for wood furniture, and then all things kind of woodworking, all things whatever. doesn't really matter, but the more focused you get on your content and the less general it is, you're going to have a lot more success. Um, we see different blogs who, you know, they're a tech site, but they start writing about, maybe they start writing about furniture, they start writing about cars. You can kind of relate it to technology, but then you start being a more general type website. So when I mean being an expert, it's writing about content that is very hyper-focused and relevant to your your niche. Okay, got it. Thank you very much. So, Chris, my final question for you today. What is the world's largest cardboard beach? Oh, man, I, you did your research. That was, uh, <laughs> oh, speaking of, uh, speaking of SEO, that was a fun one. We, we got an email um, about six or eight weeks before this, you know, this project was supposed to be delivered or this exhibition was going on asking us to build a cardboard beach. And we're like, we couldn't tell right away if someone was maybe trolling us, if this was real, um, who would want to build a cardboard beach. But as we researched it, um, right near our house, there we have a kind of like a design exhibition every year that's outdoors called um, I believe it's uh, Luminato and they wanted to build or take over this park in Toronto and make it basically a beach out of cardboard. So we'd have like breakwaters, um, day beds, chairs, umbrellas, and the whole thing was made and designed out of cardboard. Uh, there were it was it was fun. It was fun. It was a small team of us. And we basically designed, you know, and manufactured and delivered, installed an entire cardboard beach in about six to eight weeks. And it was it was massive. Like we had 180 
day beds. There was dozens and dozens of umbrellas. We did three to five truckloads to ship all this stuff um, from a warehouse. But yeah, so we built the world's largest cardboard beach, um, which was a really fun project and completely different from what our, our company did, but using the same kind of manufacturing methods and everything else. All right. I was really curious. When I saw that, I was like, huh, I'm really curious about this. <laughs> so before, yeah, before yeah. We do, no, 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 go ahead. Go ahead. No, it, it, it's always an interesting one when it comes up. Because people always ask me, it's like, you're in, you're in digital marketing. Like, how did you, you know, at the time I was in finance, I was getting into digital marketing. And they're like, I don't get why you're building a cardboard beach. Um, but for us, you know, we every opportunity we see, we evaluate it. And, and when that came in, it's, this was a real opportunity to showcase what we're capable of. And mm-hmm. and I think that's that's a big thing is all, never, I don't want to say, like, we, I say no a lot. But um, sometimes you get these opportunities that maybe don't fit perfectly into your vision or, or where you're going to. But it's also important to take a look at them and see if it's something that, you know, I'm going to, whether it's expand my skills or maybe it's going to potentially, you know, benefit me down the road. And that's, we, we looked at that opportunity and we're like, this is a once in a lifetime opportunity to build the coolest, biggest cardboard beach in the world. And how can we not take advantage of it? Right. Right. That is awesome. So before we close out today, Chris, do you have, what would be your final words for our audience? Um, I know we focus today on SEO, and I really mm-hmm. think it's it's something that every business owner should have knowledge in. Um, for us, we see a lot of businesses come to us and say, hey, can you just do my SEO? They don't, they don't necessarily know what that means or what that entails, but just do it. And the way search is going, it should be built into every part of your business. So, you know, even for your podcast, building content, building content around search, um, building your business around search topics, using search to find new topics, and really not just having kind of search marketing as one part of your business, but all encompassing throughout the business, everything you do, um, look at it from a search engine perspective because you're going to get a lot of data and a lot of information on what people are searching, what people are looking for. And it is a real opportunity that I think a lot of companies still, they're doing more of it, but it's still not fully ingrained in their organization. So I guess what I'm saying is every, if you're even looking at hiring, you know, an SEO company or a marketing agency, I really do believe that I know you, you're really busy, you know, building your podcast, um, developing your products, but having a background in search, doing some research, understanding kind of the basic concepts will really help your business propel, whether you hire an agency or, you know, do it yourself. All right. Thank you so much, Chris. And you can please let our audience know how they can find out more about you more about your company, and more about how to reach out to you if they have any questions. Yeah, absolutely. Uh, I have a resource site where I'm publishing, you know, content marketing um, guides and strategies, keyword research, basically everything SEO. And my contact information is on the site. You can contact me at chris at myseosex.com or visit myseosex.com for more information. Awesome. Thank you very much. So, ladies and gentlemen, please uh, click the link that's going to be in the show notes so you can find out more about Chris, ask questions, go on and see exactly what he offers so you can find out more about SEO, how to build your SEO, therefore building your following, building your reach. Chris, thank you so much for joining us today on the Secret to Success podcast. We are greatly appreciative of you joining us. And from the words of our founder and CEO, Mr. Antonio Tisa Jr., you can plan better, you can dominate. Thank you all so much for joining us. 
Yeah, thank you so much for having me. Yes, sir. Thank you. It's not too late to make someone's holiday season a special one. Start now as an Amazon delivery station warehouse associate to earn some extra money for the holidays. You'd help bring joy to thousands near you by preparing packages and loading them up for their final delivery. With night and early morning shifts available through the new year, you'd also have the flexibility to spend time with your loved ones. To start as a delivery station associate, go to amazon.com slash holiday work. Amazon is a proud equal opportunity employer. Today's customers expect fast, personalized support. Intercom has the tools you need to deliver just that, efficiently, at any scale. Supercharge your team's productivity and make your customers super happy with Intercom. Learn more at intercom.com support.